Welcome back to the channel everybody. I'm Trevor with Maker Experiment and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to replace the tube on the Epilogue Fusion Edge. Let's get into it. Before we get started I want to thank Engraving Concepts for making this video possible. They're actually one of the distributors of the Epilogue Laser line. I'm going to put their links in the description below for you to check them out if you would like to see what they're up to. If you are replacing the tube in your machine, you should get a box that looks a lot like this from their technical support that will have the tube in it. It will also have a couple other things that you're going to need for the process. I've already gone ahead and opened up the box. Let me show you what's inside. In this box, you're going to have the packing slip and you're going to have the return label. This label is very important because you need to send the old tube back to Epilog in order to get the credit. Otherwise, you're gonna be stuck with the core charge and you don't want that to happen. So make sure that you keep this and put it to the side while you're going through this process. If for some reason you didn't get a return label in the box with the tube, make sure that you reach out to technical support to get that label in order to ship the tube back. There's also a pair of safety glasses, you'll need these. And there is the tube. So for those that have never seen this before, this is the laser tube. This is the air cooling fins. You've got the red dot pointer connection over here and you've got the power connection over here. You've also got these plates that are going to mount to the machine itself. But this is pretty heavy, so if you're lifting this out, just be careful uh, that you don't drop it or anything else. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and keep this in the box while I take the other one out of the machine. Another thing you're going to need for this process is the toolkit that comes with your machine. So make sure you grab that. Next, I'm going to disconnect the machine from the power source. So I'm actually going to disconnect the plug. Then I'm going to turn my machine around and disconnect the exhaust. And then I'm going to show you how to take the old tube out and replace it with the new one. So before you do anything else, let's disconnect the power. So over here on the right hand side of the machine next to the power button, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the cord so that this doesn't have any power coming to it whatsoever. Now that the power is disconnected, I'm going to go ahead and turn my whole machine around and I'm actually going to disconnect the exhaust so that you can better see what's going on. Now that I have access to the back of the machine, you're going to need two tools for this process. You're going to need a 5 32nd inch Allen key, as well as a number one Phillips head screwdriver. You're also going to need the safety glasses once you take these panels off. Now I will say that from the factory, these fasteners can be a little tight. So the tool that comes with the machine doesn't really give you a lot of leverage if they're tightened too far. So you may need a secondary Allen key that actually gives you a little bit of leverage, like a right angle one. That will help you a lot in that process. So what we're going to do is we're going to take off this panel over here on the right and this panel over here on the left. I recommend you take off this big panel first because this one is actually hooked underneath. So let's start out by removing this panel. When you're removing these screws, it's always good to just have a container of some sort to put them in. So just grab a small cup or something to put all of the screws in so that you don't lose them during the process. Once you've taken all the screws out of the first panel, go ahead and remove it and put it to the side. And next, we need to remove this side panel. So there's actually two screws here and two screws on the other side. So we need to make sure to remove all of those. So go ahead and remove all of the screws. and set that panel to the side as well. Over here on the right side, we have the red dot pointer and then the mirror assembly. We also have the green capture screws that you're going to need to remove in a minute. And then over here on the left side, we have the green capture screw we're gonna to have to remove. We also have the power cable that we'll have to disconnect. And we'll also have another cable that we'll need to disconnect down here. Now that the back panels are taken off, the first thing you need to do is make sure that you grab your safety glasses and go ahead and put those on. And now I'm gonna show you how to remove the tube. So I'm going to start over here on the left-hand side. You should see 
a cable that looks like this that is red and black. You'll also see this clip right here. So what you need to do is actually press down on the left side and pull this cable apart. So this cable may be a little difficult to get apart. Just make sure that you don't break the clip that is on this left hand side connected to the machine. Next, underneath the tube, you'll see a cable that looks like an ethernet cable. Go ahead and push up on the clip and slide that out of the tube. Now over here on the right hand side, we have the red dot pointer cable. So you can see that there's a black connector. You may have to pull it up to get access to it. So on this clip, you will see a little black tab here. You need to push this down and then separate that cable. Now that you've got the cables disconnected, you're going to have to loosen the green capture screws. There are a total of three. There are two on the right side, and then there's one on the left. So we'll start over here on the right hand side and we'll just loosen these up and just go until you feel that they're completely loose. Because they are capture screws, they are not going to come out. And this screw is another case where it may be too tight and you may need to grab a screwdriver that has a little bit more leverage to help loosen that up. Then you can use the standard one that's included. And you can see that it dropped down, so this side is loose. Over on the left side, we have one green capture screw on the bottom, and then we actually have a slotted hole on the top that we're going to just slide across. So you need to make sure you loosen this green capture screw. Now that that's loose, we need to actually slide the tube to the left and pull it forward. Okay, now that the tube is loose, and you can see it moving here on the right hand side, what you need to do is grab it underneath of the brackets here. Try not to grab underneath the red dot pointer or anywhere that can be a little bit more fragile. But go ahead and grab it underneath of the brackets, slide it to the left across that slot we saw earlier. So now that I've slid this over, you should see that this screw now lines up with a circular cutout in this bracket. So once you make sure it's lined up, go ahead and hook it over top of that circular screw, and then you can pull the tube straight out toward you and remove it from the machine. Now, as you're removing this from the machine, you may need to tilt it slightly to get it over the sheet metal, and then you can pull it out. So make sure you unhook the cable from the machine itself, and there you go. Now that that tube is removed from the machine, we need to take the new tube out of the box and get this ready to install. So on the side of the red dot pointer, you will see this piece that says remove and discard. So you need to make sure that you take this off before you install the tube. Otherwise, you're going to have a problem where the actual beam is going to try to go through this cover and it's going to probably cause a fire. So make sure that you take that off. Now that we're ready to install the tube, it's basically the exact same process in reverse. So what you need to do is grab the tube and we're going to install that first and secure the capture screws. So the first thing we're going to do is actually slide the tube in and make sure you go underneath of this gray cable. Make sure you slide the tube over this screw and slide it to the right to put it into position so that we can secure the capture screws. So I'm actually going to start with the capture screws on the right hand side. So I'm going to lift the tube up into place. And then using my Phillips head screwdriver, I'm going to secure that screw. I'm also going to secure the bottom one directly underneath it. And over on the left side, you're going to want to secure the bottom capture screw. Make sure they're nice and snug and that the tube isn't going to move. One quick tip here is you wanna make sure that you can't see through this gap. There should be a black gasket that connects this tube to this mirror assembly. And if you can see between that, that's not a good thing. So you need to make sure that the tube is in position all the way to the right to make sure that there's no gap right here. 
Next up, you're going to want to grab the red dot cable from the tube as well as the connector from the machine. Go ahead and feed that cable up through the back side. Grab the tube connector, slide them over top, and click them into place. Then go ahead and just let that rest behind the tube. Over on the left hand side, go ahead and grab that Ethernet cable, and you're going to plug that into the port at the bottom of the tube. And then the last connection is going to be your power cable. So go ahead and grab those. Make sure that the reds line up and that the blacks line up and slide it together until it clicks. After that's done, go ahead and gently push the cables back into place so that they clear the sheet metal panel. Once the tube's installed and everything is connected, you can go ahead and put the panels back onto the machine. So I like to start out with this right side panel because it has this flange that sits underneath of the other panel. As a quick tip, if you did replace the laser tube or remove it in any way, you will need to realign all of the mirrors on the laser because they're dependent upon the tube position. Before you put on any of the back panels, I recommend going through the mirror alignment video and checking that out to make sure that you get all of the mirrors aligned for the best possible laser position. And once you've done that process, you can go ahead and put the back panels on. If for some reason you're not going to be able to align the mirrors in the same day that you're replacing the tube, I do recommend that you put the panels on in between. That's gonna do it for this video. Hopefully this video has been helpful in describing the process for replacing the tube. I know that this is very specific to the Epilog Fusion Edge and it doesn't really apply to any other machine, but the overall process of removing a tube and then making sure you go through the mirror alignment is very important. You wanna make sure that you do those in tandem and that you don't forget that second step. If you need to go through the mirror alignment process, I will put a link in the description below to the mirror alignment video so that you can go straight into that one and tune your laser up. But thank you again to Engraving Concepts for making this video possible. If you liked the video, I'd appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications so that you know when I come out with new videos. And be sure to check out my Instagram, at Maker Experiment, where I share these things along the way. I wanna thank you for taking the time to watch this video. And I'll see you in the next one.